multiplication, the traditional algorithm. We have already learned one way to multiply large numbers, which is the partial product method, and we're going to learn the traditional algorithm and then still one more after that. Um, if you ask your parents or grandparents how they learned multiplication in their, um, when they were in school, they probably learned this algorithm. And by algorithm, it just means steps that you follow to solve a problem. So we're going to learn this one, but we're going to focus on what it, how it relates to the partial product method. So when we multiply a two-digit by one-digit problem, we're going to see the steps over here each time. So let's just follow these steps as we go through. We're going to multiply the ones times the ones. So three times four is 12, but we're going to carry the tens. In the partial product method, you just wrote 12 right here down under the line. But this time, instead of putting that um, tens digit there, we're going to carry the tens digit. Now we're going to do 1 times 10 and add. So I'm going to do the 1's place times the 10's place. 4 times 1 is 4, and then I'm going to add that 1 at the top. So 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So my product is 52. And I um, estimated this. I rounded 13 to 10, and I kept 4 as is. So my estimate was about 40, and 52 is pretty close to 40. Next, we're going to do a two-digit by two-digit using the traditional algorithm. The first thing I want to do is multiply my ones times my ones and carry. So six times seven is 42. And remember, in the partial products method, you wrote down 42. But we're going to go ahead and sort of begin the adding process by um, carrying into the tens place. Then I'm going to do 1 times 10 and add what we carried up there. So three times, or 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 is 25. Now I'm going to put a placeholder 0 in the 1's place. So down here on my next row, I'm going to put that placeholder 0 um, in the 1's place. We'll talk about it in a minute why we use that. Now I'm going to do 10 times 1 and carry. So I'm going to do 2 times 6 is 12, and I'm going to carry into the tens place. I need to, I think it's helpful to either erase, or better yet, even just cross out what you carried from when you multiplied um, this, the ones times the ones. So I just did 2 times 6 is 12, there's the 2, carried the 1, and cross this form out so you don't get confused about what to add. Now I'm going to do my tens times tens and add. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Now I'm going to add both products. 2 plus 0 is 2, 5 plus 2 is 7, 2 plus 7 is 9. Now quickly, before we go back and talk about what happened and why, let's double check that our answer makes sense. I estimated by rounding 36 to 40 and 27 to 30, and I got 1,200. Now that does seem like a pretty high estimate compared to this, but when I look back at my numbers, I see that I had to round up to get to 40, and I had to round up here. So it would be true if both of them are up, if both of them I had to round up, then my estimate's going to be a good deal higher than my actual answer. So this answer still makes sense. Now, why do we use this placeholder zero? Why put that zero in the ones place? Well, we learned it when we talked about the partial products method. The reason is, when you do this step right here, 2 times 6, when you do that step, you're not doing, you are, well, let's talk about what you are doing first. You're doing 20 times 36. This 2 does not represent 2, it represents 20. So you're doing 20 times 6 and 20 times 30. So it makes more, it, you're doing 20 times 36 to get 720. So it's like you're going ahead and putting that zero in there because you know that you're multiplying by 20. It's not that you're multiplying 2 times 36, which would just give you um, 72. So because we know that that 2 represents 20, we need our placeholder zero in the ones place. Another reminder, just like we did in the partial products method, sometimes it gets confusing about this times this times what times what, and you can think about the bow tie again. You want to go 
ones times ones, ones times tens. Then, this is the step we're adding, you want to put the placeholder zero in the middle. Then you're going to go tens times ones, whoops, and tens times tens. And if you have created a bow tie, then you know that you have done it correctly. Next, a three digit by one digit, which is a lot like the two digit by one digit problem. We're going to do the ones times the ones and carry the tens. Nine times eight is 72. Oops, put the two here, carry the tens. One, then I'm going to do one times ten and add, but this time I have to carry if I have any hundreds to carry. So eight times one is eight, plus seven is 15. So I'm going to carry the hundred. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 1 is 49. When I estimated, I rounded down to 600, and I kept 8 here, and I got 4,800, which, wow, is very close to this number. And it's very close because I kept this one the same, and I wasn't very far off from 600 here. Next, we're going to do a three-digit by two-digit problem. And it's going to look a lot like I'm combining the um, three times one and what I did with the two times two, putting all those steps together. One, do the ones times ones and carry the tens. So I'm going to do two times four. And it says carry the tens. Well, two times four is eight. There are no tens to carry. Next, I'll do nine times two is 18. And I'll carry the hundreds. So that was 1 times 10 and add, carry the hundreds. Two, now I'm going to do the ones times hundreds and add. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Now I'm going to put a placeholder 0 in the ones place. The reason is because I'm getting ready to multiply by 60, not by just a 6. Now I'm going to do the tens times ones and carry the tens. So I'm going to do 6 times 4 is 24. Carry the two tens. So now I'm going to do tens times tens and add this two, and then carry any hundreds. Six times five is 54, 55, 56. I'm going to cross off that one so I don't add it again. And then I'm going to do tens times the hundreds and add. Six times one is six, plus five is 11. And then finally, I'm going to add both products. 8 plus 0 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12, um, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 6 is 10, 1 plus 1 is 2, and a 1. And I've got 12,028. My estimate down here, um, 194 rounded up to 200, 60 rounded down to 60, so I rounded up and I rounded down. This tells me it's going to... Um, be more of an, an accurate answer estimate because I went in both directions with my numbers and I got 12,000, which is very close to the exact answer. And finally, a little challenge for you to really stretch your brain. What if you were given a three by three digit problem to do? Well, I went ahead and did all the steps here for all the way up to if it had just been a three by two digit, okay? So have that so far. So then if I add that digit in the hundreds place, I hope that you're thinking that this is not 1 times 567 and this isn't 10 times 567. This is 100 times 567. Like there's two zeros here if we broke it up into expanded form. So instead of just one zero as a placeholder, I need two zeros as a placeholder. And then I would go through and multiply the hundreds times the ones, tens, and hundreds. So 1 times 7 is 7, 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 5 is 5, and then I would add. And I get 72,576, which looks pretty close to my 60,000 estimate. Notice that I rounded um, up here and I rounded down here. and 60,000, when working with such large numbers, is still pretty close to 72,000. And in the next video, when we see lattice multiplication, we may find out that this is a, lattice is a better method to use when we have such large numbers.